Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to First Christian Church today, those here and those online. We are glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. I uh, want to highlight a few of our announcements this morning. It is Fish Sunday, so if you'd like to make a donation to Fish or something, just put that on your check. Or um, I don't see the basket back there, but we might be able to take some um, actual donations of food if you have that also. There's a new sign-up sheet in the fellowship hall for Coffee Connection. Please sign up for that if you can. The church office will be closed tomorrow in honor of Labor Day, and uh, the church is responsible for PAD's duty tomorrow night. Looking ahead, next Sunday we have an elders meeting at 8.15 prior to Sunday school, and the Sunday school kickoff will be at 9 o'clock. And that will be 9 o'clock sharp, and there will be breakfast. And then looking ahead farther, the youth group will be meeting following worship on Sunday the 18th. Any other announcements this morning? I have one, I have yes. one Chris. Yes, sir. Um, the 17th of September is the Fiesta Day Parade. You guys from Sterling Rock Falls, everyone know. Uh, the first Christian church this year is going to put on a float in the parade. So if you are interested in helping out in any way, we got everything ready. We just need people, bodies, just to put all the stuff onto the float. We'll be doing that fri uh, Friday the 16th, and we'll be doing that out of town just south of Rock Falls here off of uh, uh, Hickory Hills Road. It's, it's down there. It's, uh, they're the ones that are going to loan us the uh, truck and the uh, flatbed hay rack. So if you'd like to help out decorate, or if you know someone that would like to ride on the parade for First Christian Church, please get a hold of Fabi or get a hold of myself, and we'll get you guys all lined up. So we need volunteers to help build the float, and we need help volunteers to help work the float. So if you want to be in a float and you want to hand out candy or something, please be more than happy to, to have you on board. This will be for the First Christian Church and for the Fiesta Day Parade. And Olivia, yes, you have a question? Yes, yes. We can't throw it off the float. They don't allow that, so we'll have people walking along. I think we have a special guest coming to, to operate to run alongside our float. It's a very special, we, we, we pulled a lot of strings to get this, this individual to come and do this for us. So it's very nice. It's a big secret. You'll have to come to the parade if you want do to see it. Do we have a so. theme, Ken? Do you need decorations? Or uh, fiesta. So oh, okay. if you guys got uh, some nice garland for uh, red, <laughs> green, and white, and you know, we're, we're, anything to do with the, uh, the, the Mexican heritage we have here in okay. Rock Falls and Sterling. So. Okay. Just bring some bring some ideas and a stapler, and we'll be we'll put you to work. What time on Friday are you going to be working on it? I don't know. It'll probably be after after work sometime. Probably probably after five, I would say, and uh, we'll be there all night, and then probably working on a little bit once we get in position at the at our float start in Rock Falls. Uh, we'll probably be doing more there, just so because okay. it's going to be traveling about six miles into town. But once it gets into town, then we'll put all the little stuff on. Okay. Okay. You, so get a hold of Favi or myself. We can we can get you. Do you know you know where the lineup is or anything? I, I think it's there behind McDonald's, isn't it? Just. Okay. Because you could use my parking lot to put put it together again, what you need, and then you're not far from McDonald's. Okay. okay. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. All right. Thank you. I. I uh, heard there was a little two-year-old's birthday yesterday. Can she stand up? Oh, there she is. <laughs> yep, and I was going to say, I heard there's somebody else's birthday today, but I won't make her stand up. Happy birthday, Connie. <laughs> Any other announcements this morning? I have one question. Is there somebody who's supposed to be the youth reader today? Oh, okay, Gage, I have it up here. You don't have to pick it up now unless you want to practice. Oh, you want to practice, Gage? He's a good reader. I know he is because I was going to do it cold, so I'm sure Gage. There's some big words in there, Gage. <laughs> Okay. 
Any other, other announcements or anything this morning? Please join me in our call to worship. It is difficult to follow Jesus. It has cost us everything. Be ready to count the cost. We are ready to surrender ourselves to you, O Lord our God. Please stand for our hymn of praise this morning. Change my heart, O oh God. my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. I am the potter, I am the clay. Lord, My heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Hold me. children and children at heart, come on down. <laughs> now I'm, I am going to need participation from everyone, so, okay, guys, come over closer because I got stuff to show you. We've got a good group here. And a good group out there, too. Okay, so I was thinking about this. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do, and I think you're all going to really enjoy this. Oh. Well, maybe not. 
Okay, does anyone know what a disability is? No? See, I knew I was going to do this just like Pastor Zach because he always asks a question and everybody's like, oh. Okay. Huh? Oh, you know the answer. Okay, or, or something. Okay, all right. One of her friends has Down syndrome. Okay, so a disability is a physical or mental condition that limits a person's movements, senses, or activities. So now can you think of anybody that might have a disability? Anybody that can't hear very good? Don? Um, <laughs> Okay, well, never mind. Okay, <laughs> or maybe walk too good? Yeah, Mr. Moore, he's having a hard time walking now, isn't he? Okay, well, my sister Cindy had a disability. She was born completely normal, just like all of you. But when she was seven, which was the same year I was born, so you know how long ago that was. <laughs> really long, yeah. She got diabetes. Way back then, the doctors didn't know as much about diabetes as they do now. She was made to feel different in school, and that wasn't very fun for her. When my sister was 20 years old and was going to school to become a nurse, she lost her eyesight and became blind. All right, so everybody needs to participate in this. Let's all close our eyes real tight right now and imagine how it would be to only see black. That would be kind of scary, wouldn't it? Yeah. I remember when my sister, she was gradually losing her eyesight, and I remember my mom saying when she, when she came downstairs from in the morning, and she said, I can't see anything. Yeah, yeah. It, you know what? If I closed my eyes and walked around my house where I knew where everything was, shoot, I'd be running into all sorts of things. Would you? Yeah, yeah. Tripping over toys. Yeah, you would be tripping <laughs> over toys. Okay, so just because she couldn't see, she never stopped learning. She enrolled in a school for the blind in Chicago. She learned amazing things like how to walk around using a cane to guide her and how to fold money. I brought some, uh, okay, so. Oh yeah, honey, you can open your eyes. Thank you, sweetie. Okay. <laughs> you really listen well to directions. Okay, okay, so. We would, my sister and I, we would go to the bank, uh, always on a Thursday, we always got groceries. And so she would take money out of her checking account. And so I'd, you know, tell her which ones were 20s, which ones were 10s, which ones were fives and ones. Well, you know, you couldn't just, if somebody said, okay, ma'am, that'll be $10, you couldn't just hand them whatever and hope that they give you the right amount of money back you know people still can't be trusted very well but anyway so what she would do she would fold her 20s into thirds and she would fold her tens in half long ways and then in half that way so she'd know what was what don't take that, Max. 
and then, and then she'd hold, fold her fives just in half, and the ones she'd just leave plain. So that really helped her, and it made her very, you know, independent. Yeah. Okay, so she learned how to type, and since she knew medical terms, she became a medical transcriber who typed the doctor's reports. She also learned to read and write Braille. She was a very independent and amazing lady. Yes, sweetie. Oh, that is such a good question. Okay, so I'm going to get to that. All right, do any of you have a hobby or something you really enjoy doing? I like diamond painting. Okay, you like diamond painting. I know that. Anybody else that you like to do? Yeah, Yale. You like to draw? Very good. You like Christmas. Oh, giving presents. You're very good. Thank you. Do you like to pick out presents for people? Oh, that's nice. I have more toys. You have more toys, so you don't need any toys, right? <laughs> oh, she needs more toys. Okay. <laughs> Alan? Oh, you like basketball. Okay. It's fun to have a hobby, isn't it? Okay, so, well, Cindy, that's my sister, she loved to cook, and she loved listening to a recipe program on the radio. She would record the program and would write the recipes she liked in Braille. She did this for years because she had to know where things were that she needed. She was a very organized person. And she had her recipes in binders. It didn't matter. People gave her binders to use. And um, she would always label them so she knew. She had them in a big bookcase. And when my daughter and I got these, we, we decided, OK, what's in this one? So we, we, uh, we read Braille and we figured it out. OK. All right. So let's see. Uh, OK, so I brought, I brought a couple of them along. This one says brownies, and this one says bars. Now, I do have some recipes that you can choose what you want. I hope I have enough. I'm sure I do. But they're mainly cookies, because I did that, that book first. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, okay, so, and I also brought along an example of how the Braille works, okay? What's your name? Ivan. Ivan, good question you had earlier. Okay, where is it? Oh, and this is a picture of my sister, Cindy, with her guide dog. She went and got a guide dog. I know, that's her guide dog, Lily. And my kids, they love Lily. When Lily wasn't working as a guide dog, she was just a regular dog at home, and my kids, my sister would babysit them. They'd take her to the basement and dress Lily up in clothes. Yeah. Um, I want to do the um, red. Yeah? Would it be what? It's the red, but it's long to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Okay, so anyway, that's, that's Cindy. Okay, and okay. I used to have a wood, a wood one of these, a wood braille example, but I couldn't find it. So I made one out of styrofoam. Okay, so there's six dots, and that's what the braille language is all made of, six dots. There's a really good book in the children's section at the library. It's called Six Dots, the story, the, the story of Louis, Louis Braille. And he was blind and figured all this out. Okay, so 
the way I translated, my sister had this. It was a weekly reader. It was actually paper, but I took it to SBM and I said, if I've got all of these Braille books to um, translate, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need it laminated because it's not going to hold up. So anyway, here's, here's the basic letters, but then there's other things like the word, things that you would use a lot of, like the word for, you know, and so that whole word is, is one example here. So I'm going to ask somebody, and, and uh, Ken doesn't mind that I'm taking a lot of time. <laughs> okay, so I need some, and you don't have to fill all the holes. And we'll see if I know my Braille just by you putting um, some marbles in, in a few holes. Who wants to do it? Okay. Okay, take whatever, and you're going to. Okay. Just a second. Oh, that's the only one you're going to put in? Oh, okay. All right. So, Ivan? Mm -hmm. Ivan chose these. Well, this is pretty basic. This is just considered a dash. Okay. All right. So, who wants to try another one? Me. All right. No, don't put it down there. He already put one down there. Unless you're going to put one someplace else. Okay. Okay. Is that it? Okay. This one right here are the two letters EA. So, I mean, think of how many times you, you know, there's reach, there's each, there's treat, there's EA together. So, I tell you that, Lewis Braille, he was pretty darn smart. Okay, Max, you want to put a couple in? Okay. Okay. Give me a little variety here. Okay, you're going to do three. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So this one here, this is a D. Now, if for a number, it would have a backward L in, yeah in front of the number. So this is the letter D, so it's also four. Oh, excuse me, sorry. I needed more of Helen's stuff, okay, okay. <laughs> so, and that's pretty cool. Okay, all right, y'all, come on. Everybody gets a chance. Where'd Alan go? Alan, you're pretty fidgety there. <laughs> Okay, I might have to cheat at this one. <laughs> Let me see. All right. Oh, that's an O. That's an O. Yeah. Now, if we did it opposite, then it would be O-W. There. All right. All right, Alan, here you go. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't have to use all of them, but you can if you want. But we know that is going to be four. <laughs> okay, this one here is you. Oh, oh, do you want to double check that for me? Tell him if I'm right. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, come here, this way. Okay, give her away those. Whoops. Okay. Mm. Well, that one would be A R. This one, oh gosh. I don't know. 
I'm under pressure here. Okay, what is this? See that? See it? I think it's, no, not that. Oh, no, no, not that one. Oh, for pity's sake. Oh, I got it. See what it is? It's GH. So we would use that in light and, you know, whatever. Whatever you use GH. Enough. Yeah. Ghost. Okay, very good. All right, you guys have done really well. Oh, thank you. What honey? My name is Leo. Leo? 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 Yeah. Oh. L-E-O. L-E. Oh, Leo. Oh, that's the zodiac sign for me. My name is, <laughs> my name is Lee L. Lee L? Okay. All right, well, let's finish up here. All right, so my sister died 26 years ago. I have all of her recipe binders at my house, and I have a hobby of my own with these binders. Can you guess what it is? Cooking. Well, cooking, yes, but I am also translating them. So... I, I look at her symbols, and I write the letters underneath. And sometimes, like with the G-H there, I'm like, Cindy, what are you trying to tell me here? And sometimes I have to look on the, uh, another page, and it gives me, like, words that they've shortened. Okay, so she had... How many binders do you think she had? You know, this is just bars and brownies. Okay, there's casseroles, soups, and she had two soups, A through M, N through Z. Oh no, not 12. Take another guess. A case of them? Okay. No. Oh, a cake, yes, she had cake, a couple cake ones. Okay. How many, how many do you think, Josue? Oh, you are so far away. There are 48 binders that I brought home in this really tall bookcase. Well, I've been working at it for a while. And when I was laid up with my knee, I really had fun with it. Can you guess how many more I have to go? 48. How many more do you think I have to go? <laughs> Whoever said that, that was good. <laughs> but no, I've gotten a little better than that. I have 38 more to go. Okay. And some of them, I'd look at them, and I'd look at the title, and I'd go, ooh, that doesn't even sound good, and I'd throw that one away. So I kind of skimmed through them. Okay, so I brought some recipes for you to take home, and I wrote the letters that we know under the Braille symbols. And it's kind of cool because you have to remember, close your eyes and see if you can figure out where those, you, you saw we had the six dots. See if you can figure out where those dots are. So, okay, so let, well, wait a minute before we do this, because Tim always plays a song and I'm always up here putting things away. Can somebody give me give me uh, yeah, some stuff? Ugh. Thank you. That's what I like is good helpers. Okay, and I'll put the money away. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good. A paper clip. Thanks. Okay. All right. So. Now, we are going to divide up our recipes, Tim, after we say our prayers, so don't start, you know, don't go too crazy on us there. Okay, all right, let's stand up. Join hands. Let's say a prayer. Come on down, Leo. Good job. All right. Dear God, we praise you for giving us the bodies we are blessed with. We know that even if something happens to us 
and our life isn't as easy as it once was, you will be right beside us to guide and give us strength. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay. Here we go. We got some recipes. All right. We've got... Okay. See, see the titles. And... Oh, this... This one here, this goober bars, I thought that sounded good. Okay. Take one you might like. That one? Okay. Okay, go sit down. Oh, that one's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Oh my gosh, nobody took the goober bars. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Come on back. Bye. Bye. Bye, Thank sweetie. You oh, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Olivia. As a community of faith bound together by the Spirit and unified through God's love, we seek in this time of our worship to extend our prayers beyond this space and into the hearts and minds of the people we care deeply about. We want to extend our prayers to each person on our shut-in list, as well as our special request list praying for God's love to be with them through their treatments, recoveries, and any circumstance they face this week. I've been informed that Betty Hallgren's at home with COVID now. Uh, do we have any other prayer requests, joys, or concerns? Okay, let us pray. Loving God, may, all your, may your all-encompassing healing love surround us this morning. May we be given strength through the promises you have made to us, and may we use those blessings to reach out and change this world for the better. We pray that your healing hand is with each person we have lifted up today, and that they may be given hope, peace, and love through all of their struggles and all of their triumphs. May you walk alongside each one of us who has gathered this morning, leading us forward into the world and helping us to live our call of discipleship. In the name of our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Now join us with hymn number 720, 1 and 2.
We bring our tithes, our offerings, our gifts, not as slaves who bring the labors of their lives to a master, but rather as a free people who joyously give of our lives to the one who has given us life and life abundantly. Let us give from the great abundance of our lives. The deacons will now collect our tithes and offerings. God of all gifts, we offer these gifts, pieces of our lives, that together we might build your kingdom in the world around us. In the name of the one who showed us how to give completely. Amen. Psalm 139, 126, and 13 through 18. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intri intri intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my un uniformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I tried to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you.
Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. Dobro horanco. How's that? <laughs> I try. Our second scripture reading today is from Luke 14, 25 through 33. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus. Turning to them, he said, whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, spouse and children, brothers and sisters, and yes, even one's own life, cannot be my disciple. Whoever doesn't carry their own cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. If one wanted to build a tower, won't you first sit down, calculate the cost to determine whether you have enough money to complete it? Otherwise, when you have laid the foundation but couldn't finish the tower, all who see it will belittle you. They will say, well, there's the person who began construction and couldn't complete it. I can hear it now. Or what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down to see whether or not his 10,000 soldiers could go up against the 20,000 soldiers coming against him? And if he didn't think he could win, he would send a representative to discuss terms of peace with his enemy while there was still a way off. In the same way, none of you who are unwilling to give up all of your possessions can be my disciple. So the word of God for the people of God. Henry, you see, was a crotchety old man. He loved his ways and he loved his hat. One day he got up, looked all around the house. He could not find his hat. Well, he was cheap, too. That means he was not going to go out and buy himself a hat. He was going to go to church, and he was going to steal himself a hat when everybody got into church. Okay? He's thinking. So he waited for all the congregation to make their way into the fellowship hall or into the, uh, the sanctuary. He thought he'd sneak in quick, run over to the coat room, get himself a hat, and highball out of there, right? Now, as soon as he walked in the door, one of the deacons was right there to greet him, escorted him right into the church. And he thought, oh, now i got to sit here and listen to the whole sermon. So as he's listening to the sermon, it was a riveting sermon. It was all about the Ten Commandments. Yeah. So as he was listening through the sermon, he exited right after the sermon, and the pastor met him over in the narthex and said, what would you think? And he goes, you know, pastor... I came to this church today, and I was going to steal a hat. And then I heard your sermon about the Ten Commandments, and I decided not to. He goes, oh, thou shall not steal. You mean that commandment? He goes, no, 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 the one about the adultery. As soon as I heard that, I figured out where I left my hat. Well, if you think the sermon's not going to get any funnier than that, you're very, very, very disappointed. I had a very long sermon, but I had to throw out about 10 pages once I saw Olivia took up all of you guys' time. So I'm going to try to get you out of here by noon, I promise, okay? For me, this scripture sounded nothing like what Jesus would say to his followers. He comes off rather rash and seemingly trying to discourage his followers from becoming his disciples. He first tells them that you cannot be a disciple if you don't hate your family. You cannot be a disciple if you don't hate yourself. And on top of that, you have to give up all your possessions. I can think of a few things I have left in my life after four moves in 10 years, an ugly divorce, that I really want to keep, you know? I might want to keep. I know a few of you cannot live without a few things in your life, too, like the cell phone sitting in your hand, right, Lele? Okay. 
And I don't know about you, but I really, really like air conditioning, you know, and indoor plumbing. But is Jesus being rash and trying to keep away his followers from joining his flock? I doubt it. I believe Jesus was just trying to show them what it truly takes to walk in his footsteps, educating them on what a true disciple is and what sacrifices one must make if he or she wants to walk one with God. Now, for folks like us, the -the run-of-the-mill churchgoer, I don't think it's necessary to give up all one has to be a good Christian. Being a beggar or homeless, on the streets with your family, selling your only means of shelter and transportation is not a healthy option. But maybe living beyond your means with excess is what is better said. Sometimes we forget what really matters in life. We try to compete with our neighbors and our co-workers, who has the best car, who has the best house. We collect more and more stuff in our lives that we have no room for our faith. If you run out of room, you go out and build a shed. You go out and build a pole barn. You do something like that. For those in town, you have to go out and rent a storage locker and pay to have your stuff stored. That just tells me that you have way too much shifting away from this side of the story. I'd like to hit on another clause in the disciple member club, carrying your own cross. The image of Christ walking down the small, narrow streets with the cross hung over his shoulder comes to view for most of us, as well it should. What Jesus is talking about prior to his own death on the cross, mind you, is bearing the pain of everyday life. There is rarely a day you can honestly say that you have not endured some sort of pain in your life. Whether it be the physical pain of stubbing your toe on the coffee table as you head to the kitchen for a late night snack, or it could be the mental pain of losing a true loved one. Either type of pain you are feeling, this is what you must endure. With God and time, all wounds heal. Pain is your body's way of telling you, hey, buddy, you might want to take your hand off the stove. It's hot. Or it may be your heart telling you that you miss a friend that you have not seen in a long time. All of these are just examples of pain and suffering we all must have to go through in life. For in the end, all of our pain All of our loss, all of our trials, and all of our punishment will be gone. For we will be with Jesus and God, and we will finally be able to put down our cross. Hate! That woke you up. Hate! Whoa, that's a strong word. I myself was floored when I saw Jesus use the word hate. Fabi and I, we both tell you, we discourage our children from saying hate. Right, Josue? Yeah. We don't like them to say hate. We encourage them to use other words to express themselves, not hate. Hate just seems like a very strong word when it's in the same sentence you are talking about your father, your mother, your brother, your sister and even oneself. From the text I have read on this chapter, I read that this may not be what exactly it sounds like. It's more of a self-denial. Self-denial is the way Jesus offers us freedom from selfishness and the deadly pestilence of love of strife and love of oneself. Denial is self Denial of self 
is the escape from selfishness. Self-denial is the gift Christ gives us to enable us to dedicate ourselves to God and to seek the things which are of the Lord's will. That's key right there. We have enough love to go all around. Enough for one's mother, one's father, and your siblings. Even enough for ourself, and it all balances out well. But sometimes it doesn't balance well. Sometimes we must sacrifice our time and resources that we ordinarily set aside for a spouse or a child just so we can take care of a sick parent. Or maybe we have a job that requires us to sacrifice our time that we would normally spend on our family. And it strains relationships with your parental bonding with your child. Everyone has heard the song from Cat Stevens, Cats in a Cradle. You all know what I'm talking about. In reality, we have a lot to juggle. Community, faith, employment, church, and even life itself. This all requires us to sacrifice something. And, what is, and this is what I believe was spoken when Jesus said, hate. To be a disciple, you must leave behind all you love, your friends, your neighbors, and family. You must bear the pain you will encounter when you follow me. Give up all for God. Now that is what, now that is if you wanted to be a disciple. If you trust God and follow Jesus' teachings, you can be in balance with everything that matters in life and be a good Christian. Free yourself from all that clutter of life and make room for Jesus in your daily life as a disciple of Christ. Amen. Next up is uh, another hymn. We got another hymn? Yep, there it is. Our invitational hymn. Have thine own way, Lord, verses 3 and 4. I will be up here for the remainder of the hymn. If you have anybody like to come up for a special offering or a prayer, we'll be more than happy to help you. This is your time. Please stand and sing. This is the Lord's table, and Christ invites you to share his meal. Christ recognizes you and looks upon you with favor. Christ befriends you and wants you within his circle. Count yourself among Christ's disciples by partaking in this feast of fellowship. For I received from the Lord what I also hand to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread this loaf of bread and broke it and when he had given thanks he said this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to this table wanting to be your people, wanting you to form us after the fashion of Christ. We eat this bread knowing that Christ is the living bread, and in him we find life. We drink from this cup knowing that Christ poured out his life for us. Draw us closer to Christ in our eating and drinking, that we may live as you would have us live. In your spirit's name we pray. Amen. Now we may we join in the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
Today's benediction is brought to you behind you and way up here. So I just a couple things to hit up on there. Remember, there's a sign-up sheet in the fellowship hall for Coffee Connection. We'd love to see different recipes out there. Not that we don't love Helen's food, but I'm just saying everybody can share. You know, if you like something you'd like to bring in, please sign up. We'd be more than like be more than happy to eat your food. Uh, the church will be closed tomorrow. Tim's uh, Tim's going water skiing. He tells me. And then uh, remember, next week is the elders meeting, so be here at 8.15 sharp. Sunday school kickoff at 9 a.m., and uh, we'll begin our worship at 10.15. Hello there, son. And so everybody, as you leave, may the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hand of God protect us, and may the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with you today and every day and forever. Amen.